Sheila Gunn-Reed for Rebel News and welcome to this episode of The Buffalo. On today's episode of The Buffalo, we're digging down into what Statistics Canada says is the unmatched growth potential for Western Canada and what that means next, how Trudeau and his cabal have already started their attacks. I saw what I know to be good news in Blacklock's reporter the other day. It's great news for Alberta, it's great news for the West, and so that means it's going to be bad news for the Liberals and their Laurentian chokehold on us Westerners. First, let me show you the good news, and then I'll tell you what's already happening and what I think is going to happen next. The Alberta Prosperity Project is a massive, nonpartisan movement of Albertans working together to create a free and more prosperous Alberta. To learn more about them and to find out how you can get involved, please visit albertaprosperityproject.com. Okay, let's take a look. Western Canada, within 20 years, will grow by a third, while Newfoundland and Labrador will be smaller and grayer, Statistics Canada forecast yesterday. Nationwide, the seniors' population next year will eclipse the number of children. Medium growth projections on population to 2043 forecast modest gains in Quebec and Atlanta, Canada, with sharper growth in the West and Ontario. StatsCan predicted within 20 years, the population of Western provinces and territories will increase 34% to 16.6 million outpacing the rest of the country. And according to the Statistics Canada data, much of that growth in the West will be fueled by immigration because despite what the Liberals and Liberals dressed up as Conservatives to get votes will tell you to impress their friends at the CBC, the West is a very welcoming place where immigrants want to live, where they're choosing to live because out here we don't care where you come from if you want to work hard and be a part of our community. The West, well, we're on our way back up with our heads held high, and I worry that that means the same thing it always does for us. The Liberals will do everything they can to force us back onto our knees. And the attacks have already started, especially with the implementation of Trudeau's net zero world plans. In the face of the current geopolitical situation with Russia weaponizing fossil fuel exports, we are standing shoulder to shoulder with our European friends and allies. Canada is doing our part to add to the global energy supply right now. But it has never been clearer why we need to accelerate the green transition. And you should have no doubts that Canada has what it takes to be a supplier of clean energy in a net zero world. And as you know, Trudeau is already attacking us farmers with a nitrogen emissions cap that will do to us what the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte is already doing to farmers in the Netherlands. It's going to force us to cull livestock, abandon our land, lose our livelihoods and produce less food. And all of this will mean more food inflation for everyone else because if you eat, you're involved. Two difficult years of COVID uh, that we just went through as a country, as a world, um, really highlighted the importance of supply chains, particularly when it comes to agriculture. Uh, and the investments that Canada has been making over the past number of years, whether it's with the protein supercluster, uh, whether it's in uh, innovative uh, solutions for uh, using greater technology uh, to more precise uh, farming to greater yields uh, to reduce uh, the carbon intensity of farming are things that we are very, very much working on. Canada is extremely fortunate to have a significant land mass. Not all of it is uh, conducive to agriculture. I'm looking forward to bring Olaf to the north on his next visit. Um, uh, but we do have an incredibly strong agricultural and agri-food industry uh, that is world-class in its exports uh, and uh, relies on extraordinary leadership by innovative Canadian farmers uh, and agricultural workers that we have always supported and that we will continue to support even as the world is changing rapidly the need 
for greater food security and better quality of food security is something that canada is extremely well positioned to contribute to, which is why we continue to invest so massively in agriculture in canada and look forward to continued partnerships with many, many partners around the world. and trudeau's nitrogen snoops, those Nitrogen cops are already out in full force, stomping all over the property rights of Westerners, with reports of them going onto private land to allegedly take samples of water for pesticides, and all without the permission of the landowner. This has drawn the ire of the Saskatchewan government. The feds are being threatened with trespass charges by the Saskatchewan government. But that reaction from the Saskatchewan government, it's just so rare. It's so out of place, but it's so simple and effective. It was finally the or else, the consequences part of those useless, strongly worded letters we so often see from the Alberta government. It's time the rest of the West follows the government of Saskatchewan's lead here. It's time for Albertans to start flexing our muscles. It's time for our government to do something to defend the rights of the people who live here. I'd like to thank our friends at the Alberta Prosperity Project for sponsoring this video. This has been another episode of The Buffalo. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. For more Western-centric content just like this that celebrates the people and the places and the values of Western Canada, be sure to check out thebuffalo.ca.